Right, it's a brand new morning and we're back with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Kofi Bartel. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning. Mercy is back and uh, she's <laughs> back in blue. You know, I'm, it's so great to have you back, Mercy. Yeah, it's good to see you. Uh, yes, this indeed. Morning, I, you know, I guess you had event. a little too much uh, of indulging during the Independence yeah, Day. I'm not sure. A little you bit know, of, uh, you, you know, know, you enjoyed too much and that's why we didn't see you yesterday, huh? No, <laughs> that, that's not the case. But you understand how these things can actually be. It's really good to be back on your screen this morning and thank you so much for joining us. I am Messi Abopo and as always we start off our conversation with a top trending. It will mean that uh, you know all of the conversations that you have a lot of engagement on different platforms but mostly on you know, the social media, and that's it. Now, in a particular estate, as I always seem to be, I don't know if we should talk about the estate or we're talking about well, the fact that... Let, the, let's start from the end, the early, uh, <laughs> the drug bust. Um, some time ago, I saw, uh, you know, we had uh, uh, the, the videos, you know, social media is where so you get a lot of this information these days. Some boys are fighting in Ian Iba, which is uh, Ian, Ian no, Iba. I hope I got it right, guys. Oh, yeah, because yeah, okay. I'm almost right. confused. Right, guys, yeah. <laughs> uh, which is a part of Lagos where you had some Agbero, uh, you know, throwing stuff at themselves, fighting. The one where they said the police were standing by watching and not doing anything. And some people were saying, ah, why should they? Well, if you, now you're waiting, you go do. You go and join Agbero fight. Let them finish. Let's know like you have a few of them to handle. So, anyway, uh, I said, I put out something on Twitter. I said, you know what? Maybe uh, NDLA should loan Marwa to Lagos State for one month. And all these Agbero killing themselves and, you know. I mean, look at the one that happened in Ketu some time ago where they they went to stab this. I mean, in broad daylight, a human being was stabbed. Now, the NDLA has been doing a lot of work. Uh, and, of course, you can see in front of you another bust by the NDLEA. I think Guba Marwa is the man of the year. If there's anything like that, I don't believe in all of that. But if you want to give anybody man of the year, I am nominating Puba Marwa, the DG of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, as the man of the year. Another bust. Uh, they discovered a drug warehouse. Messi, I'm sure this place is not unfamiliar to you. <laughs> Maybe I saw, I saw this story. I you talked oh, about me. Messi, I hope she's safe. <laughs> you know, another mansion know. used to house Tramadol. Tramadol at Victoria Garden City, Lagos. Uh, available reports at the time indicated that the officials confiscated over 13, this is a beautiful house here, 13 million pills of 225 milligrams tramadol. Uh, and the baron, the guy, the, the Oga Pata Pata, from what we, we know is now in the NDLEA net. Uh, Buba Marwa is already Nigeria's man of the year. See all these uh, national awards that are going left, right, and center. Of course, Chris, a lot of um, uh, controversy about the names that are being nominated by the president. That's another hot one. Uh, Marwa, if he doesn't have one already, should receive a national award. It's quite interesting to see. But, but, but you know, I mean, let's even start off from that particular part. That house looks very familiar, by the way. Ah. <laughs> But however, ah, uh, Messi, are you do we need to pause the program so we can have a conversation? <laughs> of, yeah. Okay. No, okay. but but on the other hand, uh, if if you talk about Maro and the bosses, a lot of persons have actually accused, uh, you know, the NDLEA yeah. of being biased, and that's it. And uh, you know, people are saying that hey, it feels like. Well, this is what's happening, and uh, the operation or the activity is actually not centralized. It feels like it's for select persons or select people, and that's the conversation. But moving forward to all of that, I'm very concerned because tramadol is on the table. And to be very honest, the use of tramadol in Nigeria is not banned. It's only restricted to, you know, uh, medical use or purposes because if you look at the government policy from 2018, however, it's that uh, tramadol remains a product that can only be administered through prescription by professionals. But once upon a time, I stumbled on an article that was published, you know, uh, about transnational transaction of uh, tramadol. And so... Every other time you have a research that's been put out, usually you, you have a research, it's that someone is set out to solve a problem, answer some questions. At the end of the day, there are results and specifics. Do we really act on all of this? Because if we say that we're very strong in the fight against drug, 
uh, then we should be up on top of our game. I'm talking about government acting, I mean, stakeholders acting in the right direction. Now, the fact that uh, there's no restriction to this, but, you know, a medical, uh, it should be prescribed under uh, a certain circumstance, that's what it is. But maybe, just maybe, we probably might just need a recommendation in terms of uh, legislative control at this point of policy as regards who should import and all of the control in handling uh, tramadol as it is, because it's actually not it. But like I said, now a little I saw from that particular article, it talks about uh, the transaction that happens as Lagos being the center, epicenter for you know the distribution of this product, especially within the West African uh, region or the Sahel region, however we want to put it now. And so if, if we understand, if we look at the report, and that's my concern, so it brings me back to the conversation of saying when we have research that's been put out, uh, you have uh, an organization, individuals putting out research, do a government, you know, we as a government, do we pay attention, you know, to all of this? It's a question that begs for a lot of answers. And so, however, it's been said that if you look at the north, uh, some parts of the north, especially Kanu, if you look at Bena Republic, it's been reported that Bena seemed to be, you know, top on the chart in terms of consumption of uh, the products, that's tramadol. And so why do we have this distribution channel and why do we have this coming easily and all of that, the usage of it around this particular access is because it's been reported that a lot of persons or Nigerians uh, have to get out of the country using this particular route. And so that's it, to get out to whatever parts it is, Europe and all of that. And so that's a channel. But I, I, I want to say that this article has been made public. I'm very sure that it would have been recommended, you know, to the relevant agencies. But have we really paid attention? It's okay for us to begin to say we're busting and we're arresting and we're doing all of that. But we need to look at the root of all of this, the channel of distribution and how that can be. And not on top of the table is in terms of legislation. Because if you look at it, the use of it is not uh, banned. It's, it's not criminal, however you want to look at it, but it has to be within pres prescription and all of that. And so maybe, just maybe, we might just need a legislation, you know, to tackle all of this. But some people would say that legislation might not be necessary because we already have laws and we already have what we should do and the laws should take, you know, uh, its course. But that's not the case for this one. Uh, um, before before we, 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 we move on, uh, we also have to inform our listeners about, or viewers about the, um, <coughs> the fact that the, um, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency also nabbed a, a former footballer, uh, Okafor Imano Jr. Um, he was arrested at the uh, Mutala Mohamed International Airport, Lagos, on arrival from Sao Paulo in Bra Brazil. Uh, on him was found, uh, allegedly, reportedly, 1.4 kilograms uh, of crack cocaine, and that's the picture. Just in case wondering who that was, that's this is not, this is unrelated to the uh, uh, the uh, tramadol bust. This one is a uh, former footballer, uh, Okafo Emmanuel Jr., who, on return from Sao Paulo, Brazil, was found with uh, 1.4 kg of crack cocaine concealed in his bags after arriving there an Ethiopian Airlines flight. Um, he's from Abia State. Uh, he was discovered to have that product. In the handles, he hid it in the handles of his bags. Um, he is said to have played university uh, football with the University of Nigeria Teaching Hospital Enugu uh, FC, where he was for uh, for four seasons before leaving for Sri Lanka in 2014. Uh, so he was returning from Brazil alongside uh, with him, or along with him, uh, were arrested also Ibe Chenedum Demian, who came in from Sao Paulo, Brazil, via the same uh, Ethiopian Airlines. Uh, uh, flight. Um, so that's, there's a lot going into that. We won't waste too, too much time on that. But uh, uh, it just, I think, shows that uh, the NDLE authorities are sitting up uh, to do their, their job and to make sure that the drug problem in Nigeria is uh, nipped in the bud. Don't forget the biggest um, bust, cocaine bust in Nigeria's history was recorded uh, whilst President Buhari was away 
uh, the United Nations General Assembly in New York. He had to, you know, take a step aside from his activities there to place a call through to um, uh, Buba Marwa, the head of the agency and the LEA, to congratulate him and to express his pleasure at that bus. So um, the NDLA is doing its job. I mean, Messi talked about uh, selective justice. I don't know about that. I mean, they've gone to the slums and the, the hood, you know, just like they've gone to the plush areas. I mean, drugs are everywhere. I mean, if, if you're found to be holding drugs, would you say, oh, you're being biased? If you find you with the drugs, you find you with the drugs. You, you have nothing to, 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 to complain about, you know. So it's best you don't do the, the crime, otherwise you do the time. Um, I mean, you go to some countries like the Southeast Asian countries. A case in point, in point is Singapore, where, you know, as you get into the country, they give you a card, a white card. And, of course, in red, you write there, a drug crime attracts a death penalty. So, I mean, it's you're stepping in, you're trembling, and you're making sure there's nothing on your way, searching your bags to make sure nobody has accidentally forgotten something or put something or slipped something inside because you don't want to be given the death penalty. Um, so... I think uh, they need to do more. Maybe you have more stringent uh, penalties, probably like the death penalty, and people will stop doing this, or at least it's going to go down. Well, specifically for tramadol, I think that, you know, the policy on importation, uh, there should be a legislation or legislative policy towards that. However, I want to put a, uh, look at it in terms of uh, who brings it in and the control of all of that because uh, there's no ban really to the use of it, but it has to be used within specification and description. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I wasn't talking about trauma, though. I was talking about uh, drug Drugs trans. generally. I mean, in, I'm just in, being in specific on, 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 on that particular one because that's what we're saying. But really yeah, but, but I mean, I mean they're, they're, um, they're, they're, they're stringent um, uh, uh, circumstances under which, which you should... Uh, possess prescription drugs, which is what they are. Um, so even if it's, 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 it's a tramadol, which is a prescription drug, for instance, of course, they shouldn't catch you walking on the road with it, I mean, if you don't have a prescription. So it's straightforward. Whether it's tramadol, whether it's cocaine, if you are, and who if, has if, a, if and, you and who has the a law, right actually to import it? You know, it's also another no, no, one. No, because how do you now no, have... There, there are rules. I mean... You, that's, that's what we're saying. You, Maybe, ha, you get a license to do these things. You get a... Uh, they, are, they, are, they are... What do you call it? You don't import travel and go put it in your house. You know, in VGC. And you say it's a pill. It's a drug. that people take... No, that's not it. There are rules. There are regulations that you, you, that you have to go through so that you can not... You will not fall follow the law. They're telling me... If you find me walking around a uh, Cotonou border or, or driving from one place to the other with a bag of rice, for instance, uh, it's not a crime. They are, they are procedures to show that maybe I bought it from somewhere. I have my receipt. This is where I got it from. So they don't suspect me of smuggling it. So, so all, I'm, all I'm saying is this. Um, if we have maybe more, maybe, maybe if we have more stringent uh, uh, penalties, the incidents will, will reduce. I'm just uh, I'm saying. And as much as it's okay to have stringent uh, you know, penalties, it's also okay for us to be very clear with you know, the policies, legislation, the laws. Let it be crystal clear right there so we know what we're into. But away from that, uh, another is that uh, you have also the Lagos women working for Tinubu yesterday. It's a period of campaigning and this period of politicking. So you expect a lot of rally and support. It started off 1st October where you had the Labour Party uh, supporters uh, trunking out to the streets of Lagos. Uh, they were in different parts uh, in the entire state. But yesterday was quite different because, I mean, Lagos women worked to support presidential candidate Shiwaju Bola Tunubu, who was former governor of Lagos State. And if you see... It was really constituted, I mean, uh, the composition, mostly women, really. If you see a police officer there, that's a man. But it was uh, really off uh, a lot of women who came out to show their support. That also has uh, several reports, different reports, contrary to what we're saying. But, you know, this really looks well. I mean, I'm not even surprised, like I rightly mentioned, there's a period where politics and politicking has started, and so we'll be expecting a lot of this from various uh, supporters and political parties. Yeah, yes, indeed, it's an interest, very interesting one, uh, and uh, the 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 accusations or allegations by some opponents of the All Progressives Congress in Lagos State is that um, 
uh, the people who you see out there, this is their own allegation. Uh, people you see out there who trooped out yesterday for this Lagos Women March for Tinubu rally, um, uh, that they were mostly rented, is what some people allege. Now, uh, I've seen one or two clips, you know, user-generated videos online showing certain persons uh, in, in a queue, like so two queues, you know, being paid. Um, you know, that's, that's what the allegation is. Um, some also allege that uh, uh, women in the markets around Lagos State, Mercy, were, were forced to close down uh, yesterday. Um, but even it was public holiday, so would markets be open? That's yet an allegation. Someone even told me yesterday that uh, his uh, sister had to, was forced to buy the T-shirt, you know, and you referred to that, um, that sticker sales episode, Mercy. Uh, remember that uh, that remember. Keke sticker sales episode where, and the, where oh, uh, MC Lomo had to come out to say that uh, he doesn't know about it uh, with his interpreter, his official spokesman. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, so, so that's the accusation. But, you know, for me, really it doesn't matter because it's all part of the political game as far as this country is concerned for now. Whether they were paid or they were not paid, it doesn't matter. Because if so, they rented crowd. Um, don't worry, as is, we, are, we, we, we didn't pay, so we're going to win. That's not how it is. They will rent the crowd, okay? And they're going to go on, rent the votes as well. And they will <laughs> beat you hands down. So what you have to do is not to sit uh, down and say, oh, What does that mean? Uh, crowd. And, and they will beat no. you hands down. They will. It, it sounds like you already have... No, I'm, uh, no, I'm, saying, I'm saying these are scenarios. I'm not a prophet. I'm saying these are scenarios. I'm saying if you sit down on your hands as a political party, a political movement, and so they rented the crowd, and then you say... Yeah. You, you know, so are you saying that they should they also rent, rent the, crowd? the crowd? I'm not saying it's it's true. If the allegation is true. No, are you saying that the opponent or the opposition should also go ahead and no, rent the crowd? I'm they saying, shouldn't sit down I'm and saying watch. don't use that as a yardstick to say you are, victory is guaranteed. That's all I'm saying. Don't use that as a yardstick to say victory. They will rent the crowd. I'm not saying it's true. Cause I don't have evidence. But for those who are saying, oh, they rented the crowd. Oh, don't worry. Uh, we are, we are as organic, natural. We are going to win. No. They will rent the crowd. When they finish renting the crowd, they will rent votes for the <laughs> for 28th September. They and, will gain votes. And, and votes they will use those rented. rented votes. <laughs> rent votes. They will use those rented votes to defeat you. So all you have to do is to say, okay, we need to strategize. We need to uh, uh, plan. We need to do more. Not to not to say, well, we didn't rent the crowd, so we're better than you. It shouldn't be. It's not as nervous as a Chelsea. Coffee. Coffee. All right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, I, don't, I don't like the fact that you're bringing Arsenal and Chelsea yeah, yeah, that's into this no, conversation. That's no, 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 no. But you have to work. That's okay. number one. Number two, of course, there's been a the debate, of course, is out as to who had the, the, the larger <laughs> crowd. Um, I, I saw some APC guys on social media uh, say, no, you know what? This is just a, a we're testing the mic. <laughs> they said that they are testing the mic. Pa, 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 that this is just the women who are coming out. That people should just, it's just a, a tip of the iceberg. Just them. Um, you know, testing. You know, when, when everybody comes out in full force that they will hear, you know, this is not even... But the Bobology Bank Anthony Stadium, former Unicorn, Unicorn Stadium, is, um, is a 10,000 capacity seater stadium. So maybe we can see that those who came out uh, were, were about 10,000 in number. But one of those who was there happens to be a Jockey Silva, uh, the own dear, beloved... Jockey Olu Silver. Olu Jacobs, Jockey Silver. Yeah, it's the no, one from the not movies. Like Nollywood. Jockey Silver did this. She did this. And she put out a tweet that, hey, I am at the APC Women's Rally. You know, and people came for her, you know. Well, but, I mean, Jockey Silver is an individual. She has a, a right of association. She has the freedom to, to guys, listen to me. Leave Jockey Silva alone, please. Don't even think about harassing her. You can harass Renault Mokri if you want to. Leave Jockey Silva uh, alone. Why, why would Renault Mokri be harassed? No, why I mean, I mean, be no, no, no. Uh, Jockey Silva is, 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 is different. Renault is, is in. So, so Renault is in. Renault Renault is not can I finish, please? Finish. Renault is in. Is in he's, he's playing the game, so I understand. I'm just saying Jockey Silva is. We Jockey is also playing the game? No, I'm saying we love her and we adore her. So, guys, all I'm saying is. Leave Jockey Silva alone. She went for the Lagos State uh, Women Rally. She's a Lagosian. She has a right to go anywhere she wants to go to, to associate with anyone she wants to associate with. And that is politics. That's democracy. Except, except people want to force the party on everyone. Then, well, of, course, well, then well, of course, there is no more democracy. Apart from Jockey Silva, there's another Nollywood actress there and some other celebrities that people know. I want to mention their names. But I mean, what I like to remind people of is that 
everyone has a right to support whoever they want to support, um, uh, whichever party. Believe it or not, Bakufi. believe it or not, believe it or not, we're still practicing democracy. Uh, nah. in case some people forgot. No, but that's right? that's it. I mean, that's very yeah. valid. For every other time that you have anyone, uh, you know, going out to show support or they belong to a certain political party, we understand those who are not expected to be part partisan. And, uh, of course, I and Kofi are not expected to be partisan, and that's what it we is. We're expected on air. Messi, you... <laughs> Wait, you, you, but, but, but however, Kofi, Kofi, let's, I, no, no, let's nobody, not nobody, go that. Nobody Kofi, expects please. you not to be partisan, Mercy. Kofi, In your work, in your work, but in life, if you want... if you're Kofi, partisan, Kofi, I, Kofi, Kofi like, can we not move, go get I into that conversation? Life, okay. it, we, we would Messi, have you, you have a thought. right to vote. No, I understand. You have a right to be voted for. I understand, but you in, have in, within right the context, but you want... Look at them. Who are we talking about now? Kofi, let's not go there because for the want of time, okay, I'm let's just move on. I'm correcting away. you. No, I, I said what I said within the context that I said. You, I said this you, on air, you, that we, because we're on air, we're not expected to be partisan. Oh, with, our work, with our lot. work. Of course. Okay. Uh, right. And that makes I a thought, lot of sense. So let's not even I you get, telling us you don't have let's a, not even a get party. into the other side. No, I don't have a party because I, I don't naturally belong to any political party. You don't belong to any political party? Yes, of course. Because now, you're so, a media person. Or so, that's your principle. So I will definitely vote, but I don't belong to uh, okay, a political okay. You're party. You're a card-carrying member of any exactly, party. Exactly, and that's Why? what it is. That's Why? what it should be. Kofi, okay. let's not even get into this conversation. Let's finish our thoughts and, then we'll and move into another. <laughs> no, we can talk about it some other time. <laughs> no Maybe problem at we will all. have a time to mm. talk about it. But one thing that stands out and should not be accepted, if it's anything to go by with all of the allegations, everyone has a right to you know, follow whichever uh, political party supports and vote whoever they want to vote. That's because we're in a democratic dispensation. But it would not be fair that some people who have actually been forced, you know, to support a certain political party. Yesterday, uh, about now, and if you go on the media, you would see videos. We're hoping that there will be a verification to all of those videos that are making the rounds where some persons were forced to show their stores and asked to go out to a certain location. If not, X, Y, Z would happen. No, it, it, and well, that's it, not it. Excuse me, I, I said allegedly. So, so I didn't say no, that. No, I'm saying that yeah. if that's anything to go by, and I'm also saying that we should pay attention to this. It is not democratic in its nature. And like I rightly mentioned, if it's anything to go by, it, it's important that we can't continue like this and expect that we're practicing democracy. Let people freely support any political party they want to support. Let people freely associate with anyone and identify with anyone. As long as these groups and persons do not constitute a threat to national security. And that's what our democratic process is about. Uh, we also have another, uh, but, uh, you know, Kofi, I'm hoping that you take yeah, that. Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, um, so, so this is a House of Representatives uh, a member calling for the scrapping of the Nigerian Senate. It, it's, uh, it's interesting. I wonder what the senators will have to say about this. Um, <laughs> somebody's telling you that uh, your, your daily bread, they should take it away. You know, <laughs> after you've done all the political fighting, they say you should scrap. I mean, you know, normally these calls come from outside the National Assembly because there's... Um, uh, what we call esprit de corps. Hey, you know, when you see some people, when they see policemen on the road, the policemen are trying to harass them. They say, ah, esprit de corps. This, well, in there, they have the practice real esprit de corps. Uh, and um, so it's, it's strange to see a uh, House of Representatives member uh, representing Ovia, federal constituency, Dennis Idahosa uh, of APC, Edo State, calling for the scrapping, scrapping, scrapping of the Nigerian Senate and the introduction of a uh, unicameral legislature to reduce costs. Uh, he's not the first time that who, um, anyone is making such a suggestion. I think we've heard it so many times. We've yeah, been, a couple of we've, times. We've been tired of it. But um, he said the Senate, one uh, of the two chambers of the National Assembly in Nigeria has a bicameral legislature, should give way if the country is serious about cutting cost of governance. Now, will Idahosa be judged in terms of uh, the... the, 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 the content and the idea of what he's, the content of what he's saying, will he be judged on the merit of what he's saying or will he be judged uh, uh, on the basis of his membership of the National Assembly and being a good fellow member to not try and take the bowl of gari and soup from the, the table guys. of another member is what we are waiting for to see what the Senate will say. But let's uh, leave it at that. Well, but quickly, just before we move away from this one, uh, the central government has actually hinted that uh, there's a plan to fund the budget from other means 
uh, which, I mean, other means we would say apart from the oil, which is the country's main source or original source of income, uh, would be selling assets in 10 states, uh, own assets at the end of the day, just to fund it. We understand that we're on the, f I mean, revenue is a major challenge for Nigeria, uh, especially at this point. I mean, it's the time we have never been so broke <laughs> as a nation. Uh, we have always been broke, but right now it feels like we're so broke. Like you rightly stated, it's not the first time we're talking about whether or not we need to scrap the kind of system, cut the cost, because this would be what it amounts to. But however, if you look at it, uh, the presidential system of government that we practice, the big question will continue to be, can we sustain this form of government? Can we afford it? Because it comes with a lot of price. You have to have a two system of, uh, you know, uh, lawmaking. You talk about uh, two uh, houses, the bicameral, I mean, so we're actually practicing uh, the legislation where you have the bicameral legislation, two houses. And what he's calling for is a unicameral. And all of this has its advantage and not. Now, if you look at the system as, as Nigeria, uh, where you have divergent uh, groups and persons, so you're talking about a lot of people and interests need to be represented. If you look at the the plus for it. It would mean that a presidential system would carry all of this, where you have everyone being represented. But let's look at our current reality. Would it be necessary that we begin to you know, practice what fits our system, mm. what works for us? Because over time, you understand that, I mean, we have been saying, oh, we're practicing a certain uh, you know, system of government and what have you. But can we really look inwards and say, this is what's working for us? Uh, despite whatever it is that we think about, would it be okay for us to begin to cut costs? Because if you look at the system that we're practicing, it's quite expensive. We understand all, every other odd that, that comes with it, but can we sustain it? Is it sustainable, uh, the bicameral system? Should we be considering unicameral system uh, in terms of legislation? Uh, what will that mean for all of us? Especially where, if you look at the world and country, countries at the time, you have about you know 40% practicing uh, unicameral system of legislation and 60%. But we need to move away for the want of time. I would definitely visit this conversation. Thank you so yeah. much. Uh, you, you probably will have to go, go, go there. Go, go yeah. where? But we have to run. <laughs> we have to run. Uh, we'll be right back. Today is the 4th of October 2022. Yeah, and uh, we'll look at what happened today in history. We'll be right back.